You're listening to Exposure on Radio X. I'm John Kennedy, and I'm here with a very special show lined up for you tonight. Alex Turner is in the studio. Hello, Alex. Hello, John. And we're going to play the whole of the brand new album from Arctic Monkeys. Tranquility Base, Hotel and Casino is the new album. We're going to play the whole thing. Alex is going to talk us through it track by track. But before that, I thought it'd be a nice idea to have a quick chat about the genesis of the album, Alex, and how it all began. Because from what I've read, it began with a gift, in a way. A piano was gifted to you for your 30th birthday? That's correct, yeah. As a surprise? This is, this is correct too, yeah. I think um, the... Like, yeah, I don't remember having very many ideas. In fact, I didn't have any ideas for this album before that, um, before I sat down at the piano. It's not something I've ever written on in the past, really, apart from once or twice. One of those songs I'd written... On uh, it wasn't actually a piano, but it was a keyboard, a, an organ. I wrote this song, "Everything You've Come to Expect," which was the last song I wrote for the second Shadow Puppets album. And at that same time, I was playing this other thing on piano, which ended up becoming the first track on this album, "The Star Treatment." Right. Um, yeah, I just think I'd, I'd, I'd looking back now. I love playing guitar. Obviously, I played it like loads of it on this record and as did all my mates but um but the, but as a writing tool i think I'd, I'd sort of reached a point with it where i it, it just um it, it it wasn't getting me anywhere yeah yeah i mean i'm just fascinated by the idea that in a way something seemingly um happen chance in that you know somebody decides to gift you a piano by you know as a surprise right um and puts it in your flat or house or apartment wherever you, whatever it is yeah and, and just kind of leaves it there so that you get home and you stumble upon it and think hang on a minute where that that didn't live there before and then obviously you're going to sit down and start using it and experimenting with it and i just love that idea that it it kind of started something well, it became the centre of that universe. Then, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Like in in the the, the piano is is one of the things that um, that led to this record. The other thing is this Tascam three eighty eight uh, eight track tape recorder that lives in that same room as the piano does, and I'd used that. The way I'd worked, there's two records I worked on since the last Monkeys one. One of them was the aforementioned. Shadow Puppets record that we just uh, whizzed by back there. And the other was the debut album of an artist called Alexandra Saviour. Mm. And Who's been on the show? She came in and... and oh, did she? And stuff. Yeah, yeah. Nice one. Well, Alex and I wrote... Yeah, wrote a lot. I, I say... Because it's a recording device, that I suppose, I'm like, what I'm talking about here. But um, yeah, I do think of it very much now as like a writing tool as well, as much as like... the. The, the the piano is um, you know the way we worked on Alex's record was we wrote songs and made these recordings of them on this eight track machine and then eventually took those tapes to a a, a real recording studio yeah. I suppose down the street and then they, those tapes became the skeleton of it and which we added to with James Ford producing and and playing on it and that's sort of that approach was. Uh, something that I'd very much enjoyed and it seemed to be effective to me and sort of was the basis upon how I approached this this new album, yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, it's interesting that you got to kind of, um, you know, so there was the surprise of getting the piano, uh, started to use it, got to experiment by using it for Alexandra Saviour's record. And, and right. so she kind of came round and you were writing songs together in that room, the spare room in your apartment. Is that is that right? That's or, pretty much yeah. accurate, yeah. The, the different, I suppose the distinction maybe that is may or may not be worth making is the piano that uh, you know the record alex and i worked on the piano wasn't there yet it was oh, there were some okay. other machines and some other instruments and, right uh but that was assuming we sort of wrote uh kind of passing an acoustic guitar backwards and forwards yeah um but the but you know the piano then turned up in my little room and uh i 
that's how it went down yeah 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 so it kind of became this thing which facilitated your creativity um you could say it helped kind of kickstart some ideas and and gave you you know made you maybe it um it kind of made you feel um unpressured because you were just mucking about on this new toy or a new present much in the same way that probably the first time i really started playing electric guitar it had that uh it had an, an effect on me like in a before the even the you know obviously a lot of it comes from the sound that comes out of it that then encourages you to go a certain way with what you made right right on top of it but i think there's something perhaps also about the idea that i'm holding this electric guitar now and it makes me like this person like um like it's a the, the, the get, like gets you into character or something i suppose it's like what it, i suppose I, I believe the they, it's what they describe in dramatics as uh, the mantle of the expert, right? And it's the idea that, like, to take on this role, you have like the hat that the character has, or whatever. It's, I don't know. I think I suppose, like, just what I'm getting at is like I, I sort of vaguely remember the idea of like plugging an electric guitar in, and before I could even play much, it gave me this like idea of like, oh, and, I, and now within this, I'm 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 gonna write like this. I think it's the same, much the same with the piano. Like just sitting at the piano suddenly seems to like inform the way I would, the, the you know the tone of the lyrics in in what in on, on this record. Yeah. Before we get, and then you, of course you start your fingers fall in these certain places and the and from the sound it, it like you start to bring it all into focus. More than that, but I think there is. Maybe it's worth mentioning, like this summer, just about sitting at the piano stool. That I feel like, yeah, took me to my imagination to a different place. Yeah, yeah, which is really interesting. You know how how something as simple as just you know sitting in a different chair can, can free your mind up. You know, so it can be. I've, I've I've experienced it in the past with even like or picking up somebody else's guitar. Often, like if you like, round at a friend's house, perhaps, and. Uh, Something about just not knowing where it's going to go that seemed to. Yeah, interesting. So um, you got the piano. You're at home. Um, you've got this Tascam. Is it Tascam? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, recording eight track recorder, and you start writing some new songs and, and kind of filling them out yourself with exactly. The band. Yeah. So kind of putting it all together, all the different parts. Right. And yeah. you end up with these these kind of demos of songs that um, at that point. Because you do work with other people, Alexandra mm. Savi, part of the Last Shadow Puppets. Um, at that point, you're thinking, "Where are these songs going? Who are these songs for? What am I going to do with these songs?" I mean, in my edited, you know, what I was trying to do was make a Archie Bonkey's record. Like that's not um, that wasn't I, w I wasn't sort of um, trying to do anything else. I don't think, um, and not that far into this process, I suppose, like a few months into. It, this I'd um, yeah Jamie came and got involved with it and we spent a couple of weeks and he added guitar parts to these recordings that I'd made um, and it went from there really yeah like, uh, yeah a lot of the what we did it he and I in those couple of weeks in terms of his parts and my vocals that I did then are, are, are like what you're hearing what we're hearing now like on the on the album I mean there were another couple of chapters after that where like we made the rest of it all make sense but I do believe that there's something about that moment when you first record something um, you get an opportunity I think to capture it in a way that you w will not get the opportunity to do again and um, that's been proved to me more than ever with this experience I've had working on this thing because you know, eighty like percent of the vocals on there are like from me sitting there with a microphone, sort of play, pressing, playing record on that machine. Yeah, in in your home. Yeah, when I'm like the only man in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. And and so then after that, um, you did uh, take it to a couple of different studios. So you took it to a, a, a studio in LA, uh, Vox Studios. Is yes, that correct? That's right. Where we did actually do that, Alex. Save your record, right? Um, we did it. We so we did sort of 
we added a bit more to it there. There's a load of tackle there, and we added vibraphone and various of the the more interesting keyboard sounds all came from that uh, from that yeah Vox Studios as it did on you know that's where we did all the keys and that on AM and on the on Alex's yeah there's it's just a bit of a treasure chest of um, yeah musical instruments and recording equipment I yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah that's where we did like that part of it but then I don't know the real where it all came together was at the studio outside Paris called La Fret um, which we'd never been to before and that was the where I, I don't know it feels like the energy of the whole thing was sort of installed or like reinstalled into the project at that yeah. point like yeah like I, like, we, like I said we kept a lot of that stuff in the vocals specifically and like some of the guitar stuff from from home but a lot of everything else was really replaced and i think a lot the the like i say yeah the energy when i listen to it now it, it, i associate that with uh Lafrette. yeah that's interesting and it seems to tie in it seems to me um with some of the inspiration some of the musical inspiration um for the record because from what i've read you know you were um and have been a big fan of a lot of french composers right. um um film soundtrack composers people who wrote arrangements for you know music in the 60s and 70s yeah. a big fan of all that and in, in some ways it seemed um to make sense that you would capture the energy and the right feel right. in france for, for well, this record it certainly didn't stop me like moving in that direction yeah definitely kind of egged me on i suppose rather being in that environment and olivier the the who, who, who runs the studio there whose studio it is there um like knows some of these people like knows like John Claude Vanier and like friends and and Ruby and I got I'm like very excited of it lunch yeah. once when he uh, shared that with me, um, yeah. So I, I kind of you couldn't really get much closer, I suppose. Like yeah. in that, yeah. So all all these characters that um, you'd kind of fallen in love with their music and the idea of them in a way were brought to life by the owner of La Frette. Exactly, yeah. No, he's like, one day, I was like, we're out over some soup or something. He's like, he's like, oh yeah, Francois and I used to mess about one of them. It was like, Fran who was that? And he, he meant, he was referring to Francois de Roubaix who did the soundtrack to uh, these three Jean-Pierre Melville films, which I became fascinated by, like a, a year or two ago, which was, I was turned on to by... Uh, the by Lauren Humphrey who played drums in the Shadow Puppets on tour he sh showed me these films basically one's called Le Samurai one's called Le Circle Rouge and the other's called Un Flick and they're all starring the same actor Alan Delon and they're all there's there's, there's similar different they're different stories the three of them but there are there's there's themes and certainly the tone of them is is, is similar and um Roubaix did the music for these films, I think all of them. And yeah, that's a, there's very, there's like a jazz club in all three of them, a, 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 a different club each time, but central, sort of central to the story is there's, there's these, these clubs and, they, and like, uh, the interiors in these Melville films are like all fantastic anyway. It's really, I don't know, there's just, I, I kind of don't really know how to describe it, but these the the clubs at the center of these stories specifically like captured my imagination i think and when i was sort of writing some of this music i was almost imagining the, the these these places being the backdrop there's one called in uh circle rouge it's called santis the club i think i'm maybe mixing it up with the other one there F forgive me if i am <laughs> but um yeah it, it's just um it, i don't know there's some the bar um, that I was just immediately drawn to, I've, and I've tried to. Uh, we're getting pretty specific, John. I know you yeah, like quite right away, but I guess that's what we're here for, isn't it? Yeah. Totally. The, uh, the the I don't know. I've, I've tried to look at like why I was so drawn to them. I think there's something about they're they're all uh, 
it's a it's a set I suppose like there's this club but it's a set and it's almost you can sort of tell it's a set but there's something in that that I was I'm like I'm drawn to um, like there's a point I think it's at the end of like Le Samurai where it, the it kind of all goes down in this club at the end and it the final shot is it sort of moving away from what's just happened and it moves out the shot almost to the point where you'd like see the stems and the lights and in the like not quite but it's sort of right on the sort of precipice of that and this is uh, I, I don't know that I, I, that there's some magic about that uh, idea to me like that it's, it's 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 not quite real yeah you know yeah now, I thought it would be great to to find out a bit about this with you because I think um, it 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 matters so much to what you've created. You know, it's clearly linked. You know, you 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 kind of felt involved in this world, both yeah. musically and and the the visual aspect of it as well. And it's really fed into the kind of music that you've created subsequently. You no, know? and and for anybody who might be listening, um, wondering why Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino isn't like AM, you know, th these are the reasons, you know, because you get consumed by something and involved in another um, set of, of ideas and inspirations and touchstones, and, and that sends you off in a different direction, doesn't it? I think it has, it's, it has a lot to do with that. There's probably a f list of reasons why it's different to AM, but I think that's certainly one of them, yeah. I, I think in the past, the what I was reading and watching perhaps didn't come into the music as much or... Uh, uh, certainly as it has on on this one or I always or I didn't think of it as I didn't think I was letting it in or something I, I think I I thought those activities were you know like whilst I knew obviously it was going to inform my style as a writer I, I, I think it was um, it was it always seemed like where I would get away from music or like writing mu mm. or songwriting, um, but I don't think that's true anymore. Like I, you know, I think I might have had a line like that referred to like Rio Bravo once or something in like an old song, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, this time there's, I mean, there's a few references to movies on there, but it's it's, it's more than that. I suppose it's more like the thing i was just describing about yeah. santis and yeah you know uh, and yeah i mean I, I i always feel that with you alex that you know when we've done this is the sixth album playback we're doing and, mm. and that you know you you um are a culture vulture for want of a better phrase you know you like looking at books and reading books and and films and finding out different eras of music um, that f you find fascinating and and it filters in somehow it might not be directly referenced or explicit no. but I mean even from the first album uh, with the connections to Saturday Night Sunday Morning there you go yeah I forgot about that big yeah. I forgot about that so, yeah. <laughs> but you know it's there isn't it you know, and, and it yeah. kind of, it's there and that's one of the reasons why I think it's it's nice to hear about it for so yeah. that people can get into your world too before we play the album which I think we should get on and start doing but um, we can carry on the conversation as we as we play the songs and find out more about this but certainly uh, yeah I, I think we've we've kind of established the, mm. the world and maybe um you know people are, are putting up the samurai in front of them now as they listen to the radio i love that idea That's yeah it can, you know, could help add a visual compliment to our conversation and of course the new album by arctic monkeys it is tranquility base hotel and casino we're playing you the whole thing and it starts with star treatment next it is Arctic Monkeys on Exposure Radio X with Star Treatment, the opening track on the brand new album, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. The album is out. Alex Turner is here. I'm John Kennedy. And Alex is going to be talking us through the whole thing track by track. And obviously, the album starts with that amazing line, I just wanted to be one of the strokes. And I just want to know which one you had in mind. Um, if you did want to be one of the strokes, or was it just any of them, just anybody to you know, be in that band. Yeah, I mean, there's a great deal of truth in that. Like, I think I, I, I yeah, of course, like, I, I mean, that would have, everyone knows that. Not maybe everybody doesn't know, but that's a, if you don't know, listeners, that was a huge like event for us, like as, as like in his sort of late teens, like yeah. the the arrival of the Strokes and that uh, sort of changed what I was listening music I was listening to what 
you know, sh- shoes I was wearing, like, grew my hair out and, like, borrowed my mum's blazer, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, uh, I'm a huge, uh, huge fan. And what it says to me, that line, really, or, what, like, what it when I hear it or when I utter it, as I have been doing recently in uh, rehearsals for this tour, is, um, and I think why I was attracted to... Why I put it in there in the first place and why I left it in there was it seemed to encapsulate this idea that suddenly a period of time went by in a flash, like I think was, mm. was what it sort of says to me. And it's like, you know, the the it's not as if that's the end of the line either, I suppose. It's maybe where it goes from there that is, is um sort of permits it being there, I think, yeah. as well. Like but uh no, I wrote it definitely as a I wrote it, I feel as if it came from, there was that music underneath and that was what su- suggested or permitted or released the idea of uh, that lyric. And then, but not without the idea that it was just something to kind of hold a place that I would return to once I knew what this album was going to be about and would uh, alter and make something else out of it but by the time I'd done that and did have a clearer picture of the album I came back around to changing it it just seemed to be exactly where it ought to be and I think there's possibly something in how blunt it is that caused me to almost dare me send to leave it where it were yeah like I say I think that idea that it sort of has a relationship with me past obviously and mm-hmm. that sort of idea that that may have been a cue I took from just to go back into the cinema for a minute uh, Fellini's Eight and a Half which I think I was like revisiting at, around this time as well and if you've ever watched that there's you know there's 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 a lot of the, the, the sort of past coming back in, in that film um, it, yeah it just ended up that it like I say I think there's something I don't know there's something a bit as well perhaps about how blunt it is that reminds me of the way I would have written the lyrics on that first record of ours as well that tra- that seems there's something about this record and that first one that seem like there's a similarity to them that I don't know if has been as that I could draw as strong a similarity to anything in between them that we've done but I can't quite put my finger on what it is but maybe it, it's in that line and how like direct it is or something yeah yeah, I like it because it kind of opened up, um, well, it seems very honest and open, but it also opens up this idea that you know, we're getting a glimpse into, into Alex Turner's mind, his life, but also it's kind of breaking the fourth wall or something like that. Go on, where, John, yeah, I'll where, take where, that. You know, you're kind of turning to the audience and just kind of casually speaking to them about something that is to do with you and your life and then going back into the worlds you're creating in these songs, you know, and... Um, you know, it, it, and there are moments like that throughout the course of, of the album where you kind of turn to the audience again and say, oh, by the way, you know, mm. you know this was like that, and, and then move back into exploring these other ideas that you've got going on. Yeah, it does. It, so it, it lets you know that that sort of thing's going to be going on, I think, like right away, yeah. um, which is, is, is probably is also a part of the reason I think it got left where it was. Um, but I think also for me writing it, it let me know that like that sort of thing was about to be going on, as well. And, yeah, um, yeah. That's all, all that first verse on that. I remember being like, "This is an exercise in in trying to start writing some I think I'd, I'd like I had no like prior ideas really. Um, so yeah, it's like sort of writing a verse about writing a verse I suppose like eight and a half sort of in a way like a film about m- making a film I mean it's much more than that obviously yeah. but like um, that's where it started it off yeah and Star Treatment started um, when you were still in the world of the shadow puppets in a way it did yeah yeah, they, I mean it, it was yeah it was very I remember I was definitely playing it at Shangri-La like when we were doing that uh, the, I was playing the sort of instrumental or like the chords that became the sort of piano the 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 yeah the the 
the music. Mm. Um, and that, and, but that also, I think, is um, is um, has a lot to do with why I started writing that first verse and why those the, those lyrics come f- are a product, I think, of what's going on underneath them. There, certainly in this case, like with the, I don't think without that kind of like just to go back to the sort of Melvillian jazz club for a minute, like this sort of that Santis thing that was we were trying to we were getting into before is uh, you know suddenly if I'm in that world I'm allowed to say I just wanted to be one of the strokes mm. and yeah. now I look at the mess you've made me make <laughs> yeah and, and another idea that seems to run through from this song through the course of the album is the the lounge singer Shimmer and this this lounge singer that is one of the characters or one of the people or, or is the the you that continues through the record you know that you you are this lounge singer the music is a kind of lounge band which it, i think it's the the it comes the other that happens the other way around probably i think that idea is suggested by the sounds of those um those chords and then suddenly there's yeah you sort of i, I don't know i can't I, d- I can't remember thinking like oh, i'm gonna have this character and he's gonna be the uh he's gonna be the um you know the the vehicle that through which we put the songs and ideas on this record i can sort of remember i mean there's like there's obviously the thing on this tune about the martini police which i think i like the idea that there would be a lounge singer sat at a bar overhearing somebody being cut off from having another martini and say and overhearing them say who are you who are you, who are you to cut me off the martini police <laughs> and then the lounge singer thinking that would be a good name for my backing band <laughs> right i think that's what's going on there yeah. sort of approximately yeah well, I mean, there's so many great turns of phrase, Alex, in this album that I, I can't help but think that there will be loads of bands who will be taking some of these these phrases and creating band names out of them, like Martini Police, but you know, which is a, a good example. You know, it's great, and it's um, I mean, it's 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 really interesting because it, there's such a an overall sound to this new album. You know that that it's almost like the band have created a new band uh, that does this kind of sound. Interesting, because that's w- wouldn't be the first time that happened, would it? Eh? No, no, no. But that's like, I suppose that's that's one way of doing it. And I think is is if if you sort of if you look back, there's 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 a. Uh, I don't really know. What, I don't really know what to say to that. John. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I, I'm I'm seeing it as a positive. Yeah. That, that's the way I see it. You know, the Arctic Monkeys are, you know, in some ways, you know, they they're becoming the band at Santis, and um, you know. Th- this is the natural way that you have to be to kind of make this music and express these songs in this in this way, you know. I, f- I think it's yeah somewhere somewhere it's on the some it's, it's in the vicinity of that I think possibly yeah. Yeah. Um, One point perspective is the next song on the new album by Arctic Monkeys um, and more more arresting <laughs> imagery dancing in my underpants. You know I'm going to run for government. I mean it it it's great when you come up with this stuff and and when you do. Do you, is this idle kind of conversation that you're having in your mind and you just quickly write it down or does it happen when you're at the instrument, use, you know, playing the, the instrument? And yeah. It's, well, it's like, and it, I mean, it's, it may be that it differs in, in the different instances. I think in this one, uh, there's probably... It was informed, perhaps, by you know conversations I may have heard or been involved with that were sort of under the influence of some narcotic draft or another, and you fragments of those things are, are appearing in the lyrics on this tune. Um, but I think that only takes you part of the way there like then yeah i suppose then you do come back to the it still has to it ultimately ends up having like a mind of its own i suppose and you 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 just there to facilitate it like i don't know or like let it 
it'll sort of take it where it feels like it's trying to go. Um, and then the, the the title of it, of course, being taken from a technique that we've seen in 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 cinema, specifically in the in the films of Stanley Kubrick, like One Point Perspective, is something that that is a it's a, a composition of a, a shot where all the lines in the image seem to be pointed towards the centre point and perhaps the subject is often in the centre and it gives in his films or he often used it to create this uh, it, it, there's something ominous about it inherently I think in, certainly in his films like I mean you get it in other places as well where like Wes Anderson uses it a lot in a like, di very different way but I think I'm thinking about the Kubrick sort of one point perspective when I'm when I've decided to call me song it and there's this sensation that you know it's unsettling yeah yeah and and when that is something that continues I think you know through in this song in other songs there is a kind of almost unsettling aspect to to them somehow yeah um, as as great as they sound to just you know listen to and, and get you know, lost in this world that you've created, I think, on this new record. You know, there is a, a sense of unease or ill-ease at times um, with... Well, there isn't the job there these days, the, bloody hell. No, it's true, it's true. And so, like, the, the, was it a conversation that inspired the idea of this documentary that you talk about? In, what's in, that? Okay, what's that? The, the, yeah. Sing song around the, monk, the, the money tree. Where did that, how did that one come? Um, I think what happened with that line... I sort of I feel as if it was something else. That old last bit of that might have, was some might have been something totally different, but it ultimately ended up at the idea that I was playing to a quiet room, and I think I went back and somehow some I think sometimes you you write these things they're almost they're just like some of the lines I feel like they're just there to like to support the surroundings or what's what's um preceded them or about to succeed them um now that don't mean though that it's not there's there's no meaning to it of course like i think and you could almost argue that there's more to it as a result of like looking at it that way but um i, f I don't know i think specifically in the case of this documentary uh it was yeah. It was, there was something else there, and then it it can't. It, it, I think it, yeah. It came from the. If I'm going to end up singing to a quiet room, what like like what what goes before that? Or something I, I can't. I don't know. Um, perhaps someone had told me they'd been like singing rap, singing along to a score of something, right. some sort or another. Yeah, that, that helped me get there as well. I don't know. Fascinating. Well, we're going to hear it now. Uh, this is One Point Perspective. This is Arctic Monkeys on Exposure Radio X. You're listening to Exposure on Radio X. I'm John Kennedy, and that is Arctic Monkeys with American Sports. It's the third track on the new album, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino, which came out last week and is getting the Exposure album playback treatment tonight. Alex Turner is here. Um, I'm John Kennedy, and this is the sixth Arctic Monkeys, and it's the sixth album playback we've done, Alex, which is excellent. Look at us, eh? I, got, I love that consistency. Look at that. What, yeah. a, what a record. <laughs> I mean, what a record, but what a... <laughs> exactly and it, you could say that even ties in with american sports because those are the kind of stats that come through with american sports you know it's, what a pro yeah i know i know there i am thinking that <laughs> we're just you know shooting the breeze at this juncture little do i know that you just you you're always thinking john aren't yeah, you? trying to trying to um and it's interesting Very because it seems so. to me you're always thinking too alex because um you throughout the course of the new record um there's different hints at observation of of changing social habits that we're all going through and that we're all kind of getting drawn into without necessarily even being conscious of the fact that we're getting drawn into you know being fed fake news or or kind of just looking at the world through our our phones or, or whatever it is and and you're kind of part of this you're you like us all i assume that mm. you're kind of you know, nobody wants to hear about that no no John. that's just it you talk about it in a very nice more interesting way with with you know these lovely turns of phrase that you've 
always mastered. So how did American sports come about? I'll tell you exactly, actually. Excellent. It, it got, it, I built... It, I built it around, I think. Oh, there may have been some other parts of it that I'd written before that ended up sort of finding themselves there. But I think the the uh, so the story goes here. Yeah, I was visiting my granddad, and um, I'd, I'd not yet started writing for this album, and we were talking. He and I. And he said, uh, sort of declared out of nowhere. He's like, you know, um, I often think of phrases from time to time that I think you might be able to do something with. And I thought, all right, and I'd like, you know, I'll, I'll sort of take all the help I can get at this point. <laughs> I'm like, sort of drawing a blank. What have you got in mind? And he's like, he, he's a, he's an horse racing fan, shall we say? And he, uh, he's introduced me to this idea that in the racing whenever there's a stewards inquiry what you hear back after this inquiry is the trainer's explanation was accepted by the steward and he shared this with me and I was oh, like that's so loaded you know like so I got him to write me down you know I was like write us that down sort of sellotaped it in my notebook and then went off and and yeah and I think wrote a lot wrote a lot of it around around that and what I interpreted that to yeah you know yeah. what I mean like, and sorry were you going to say something no there? no 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 I just think it sounds great it's like th yeah, thanks granddad you know I mean? yeah <laughs> I, I, I love you shouldn't have <laughs> yeah <laughs> did but, you go back for more inspiration <laughs> <laughs> but, well I've uh, I haven't had to yet but it's nice to know that uh, he's got me back like yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, that was the trigger that but, led I think so, yeah like, I think, uh, or, or certainly, that pulled it into focus. I think on, the, on this song, yeah. I had the other, like, not to sort of just intermittently go back to Melville every five minutes, but the, I think the the piece of music, the main theme by Rube to the Samurai, uh, is we you know we we began to. This is, I suppose, it was at a time I recorded the. Uh, the organ part for this a bar at a time over like two tracks um so because i was playing like a, a organ arpeggio like with two fingers and on the with index finger on each hand sort of thing <laughs> and like cu couldn't you know put it all together so I'd, we 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 made it over like these two tracks, like I'd do a bar, at a tar like or two bars, no, a bar, and a rest, and then the, the next bar, and then on the next track along, I'd do the fill it in, so it makes like this complete thing. But we, it became, we called it Lauren and I, who Lauren was recording, helping me record at this time, um, and he was the one that showed me the Melville flicks, but it became known as like the Samurai Organ Park because it's reminiscent, shall we say, of like that piece of music yeah. from that flick yeah and that's interesting that you created it in that using that method you know as it being but presumably because you couldn't kind of somehow play it all you know, in, not even close yeah, now right. like i'm now like it, it's it just it's, it's, it was just not within my remit at that point as, as a uh, as a as a keyboard player but uh yeah so it just had to it was like sort of dash over to the well I sort of had the organ set up like next to the recorder so it was like record do a bar stop like figure out and just like build it up but that's but that's the when by the time we got to France and we're re-recording a lot like a lot of these parts I could sort of play it um, as 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 uh as, as as one as one thing, yeah. Um, so that you'll be able to do that live uh, then, if you want to. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can do it now, but uh, but we but what's uh, what I think I'm coming round to here. Sorry, John. Sort of sluggishly is uh, that when we tried to recreate it, and I could play it 
not like a bar at a time. It just wasn't as it didn't it wasn't as cool as the one that was off the like dusty Tesco. And right. so that's the, the the sound on there is like from the from the demo, like Yeah. Um which is again I think like that speaks to that idea of the that opportunity you get when you like first do something to get it, it has a a charm that's often um well, impossible to replicate later. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. I've found. Yeah, yeah. Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino is the next song. It's the title track of the new album by Arctic Monkeys. And um, this place, this hotel and casino, this leisure complex, is that it's on the moon. Um, right. Is that the idea? So where, where, where did this all come from, this idea? So you, you, the recording space that you have in your home, you've named the lunar what have you named it lunar surface it lunar became sur known yeah. as that so yeah. you, that is now officially the lunar surface it c yeah I, ca I think it came from it was something to, it was something to do with like that there was that conspiracy theory that Kubrick faked the moon landing and, and you know it was a hoax and I think I'd like embellished that sl slightly in my mind and had it like where he fake the moon landing in his garage with a couple of like movie lights he borrowed and that and yeah. like some NASA lenses or something um, and it came from it was some like that was the sorts of things we were talking about or something and before I knew it like the spare bedroom where all my musical instruments and machines are became known as the lunar surface i think it was something about i like the idea it was amusing to be to say like i'm going down to the lunar surface <laughs> um it might be as simple as that how we ended up there but i think it was it was uh probably the giving that that name was like instrumental in as arriving at like the album title i suppose i think I'd, I've got some cups that have like got things. Um, they're like you know, like Apollo mission cups, and I think the word tranquility is like in reference to the site of the first moon landing, folks. Uh, it says you know, there's a picture of the eagle or whatever, and um, it says tranquility base. I think so. That's probably gone where that's come from. But when it comes to like giving the record the, its title, I've, I've, I've never found it's like. I don't know. But you may have like this idea of this, something you want to convey, and you might have this title that you think does that perfectly. But then something comes along, like Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino, that just like fits the bill better than the other thing could. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, it's like. What I'm saying is, it, it, it kind of seems to become less about that. Yeah, like what the what the it, it just just some it comes down to like a gut feeling, I think, and that's more often than not, and and that's certainly the case this time. As but where did that idea of that thing come from? I think it was first of all, it was like there's a bloke with a phone, and he says Mark speaking, and I'm like, where is he? And He's, that I decided that he was there. I think it was like a backwards. Um, it happened backwards like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I love it when Mark speaks. You know, and he tells us how to say tranquility base hotel right. and casino because there's a kind of pause, isn't it? It's like tranquility base hotel and casino as it would be because it can, and uh, it makes it very real. <laughs> I, I think I had the, you know what it is and all John just to like we're, we're, without getting like technical I had the this pitch shifted on the uh, on the tape recorder that to where I was singing it like a tone higher than it appears now so when it's slowed back down it does this thing to me voice which uh, oh I wish I could remember what that's called but I can't but it changes it matter. the sound of your but it's, voice. Yeah, it changes yeah. the sound of your voice. It sort of seems to make it like wider or something. Mm. And but, but but in doing that, like when I was writing these lyrics with a microphone in my hand and this machine, like I 
would seem to you know like it seemed to permit or release like things that it wouldn't have done like if we were playing back at normal speed or, so, or you know if well we were playing back at normal speed but if we were recording at normal speed it sort yeah. of I don't know like yeah it just allowed me to behave differently I think yeah it's interesting I mean how how important is this tranquility based hotel and casino concept I mean people are regarding the album as a, a suite of songs based on a concept around uh, the leisure the lunar leisure complex and mm. and so everything ends up being a bit filtered via this this vision uh, right. and and is it I mean does it really matter to you or is this just a, a kind of I, I think essentially it's uh, to me it's a, first and foremost it's like that's the it's the name of the record it's the name of the music is that I liked the idea that the na the record was a place because I think some of my favorite records I think of as like places that you go and you know stay for a bit or that's another reason why it ended up being called that is 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 the I think there's like the, the there's the I think there's this song Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino and four out of five are definitely set in the same place and like joined to one another and but in other ways it does it seems like a you know collection of short stories and we name the collection after one of the stories which is this one like which you know the, the there's the other ones belong in the same place as it but like are they all that alluding to this idea or a, you know yeah like you said like an hotel and casino on the moon i don't i don't know i think that's debatable yeah yeah i mean that's a great explanation for it as well and i think on on this particular song um there's less of you on it uh, not at you alex there's probably more of you alex on this song but there's less of the band on it in right the, it, it's kind of it's closer to um the, the recordings in on the lunar surface as it were is it a bit more uh, or um because i think you play bass on this track as well right that might be right, yeah, and I think that's to do with this thing we, which we've I've sort of touched upon a couple of times now, which is that um, the first time you do something, there's a there's a charm to it that's yeah mm. often. I guess that's the reason for it coming yeah. out like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of charm in this song. Uh, this is Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino on Exposure Radio X. It's Arctic Monkeys. It is Arctic Monkeys on Exposure Radio X with Golden Trunks, the fifth track on the new album, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. I'm John Kennedy, and with me tonight is Alex Turner from Arctic Monkeys, giving us a bit of background detail uh, to this new record. Um, and again, some amazing images that you conjure up in Golden Trunks, the idea of um, you know the leader of the free world in his Golden Trunks. Um, That's the one that jumps out, isn't it, it John? It, it does, yeah. It sticks with it's you as well. It kind of haunts you almost. Rather overshadows the uh, the uh, the rest of the song, really. That one, doesn't it? Which I think I sort of almost knew it would, but um, I, th I think like just just to not to skirt around that, but um, I think really it's a, the whole the whole song there is about a conversation. It's a conversation, I suppose, between myself and someone that. Um, enamoured with or, or, or I'm falling for and that's not uh, the leader of the free world in Golden Trunks by the way but rather the character in the song who I'm singing to uh, and this that's something that's come from her imagination I think I'm, I'm attempting to give some idea to this 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 character or give some like depth to it by alluding to something that may have come out of her sense of humor um and that once we like go there in the second verse it leads you into i think or it led me into the what appears here as the bridge um which says something along the lines or says well let's try and just hit the nail on the head shall we says uh, bendable figures with a fresh new pack of lies somewhere else to publicise sometimes I'm sure you've heard about enough but in response to what you whispered in my ear I'll be up front and I think the whole thing I'm sort of getting at here is that you, you suppose in these moments when you don't know what to believe in the song the person I'm singing to I'm saying let's 
you've been straight with me by whispering into my ear whatever you just whispered into my ear and I'm saying well I fantasise about you as well and we're being we're like we're shooting straight with one another at least I suppose is that is where it's coming from there yeah 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 which is which is great no um, but also it's interesting I, combination with the music no because the, the music is it, 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 it's, it's got a kind of I don't know a late late period Beach Boys feel to it. Actually, I can't say that because the Beach Boys are kind of still kind of going, aren't they? So late period would be now, but um, late sixties period Beach Boys. Well, or yeah, which I, which is never far. Never, I don't think it's ever really been like. I absolutely not. It's more like prevalent in the the sound of this than maybe all el else I've ever done before. But in in me. It, that's that you know pet sounds just specifically is is one of the first uh, records i ever remember being moved by as a child like mm. you know um that is uh it's it's a it's a for it's man for, for, you know that for me that one because um it's obviously so Californian that record, but for me it forever the first place it ever takes me to is Raw Marsh in Rotherham when my dad like driving me to me nanans as a kid and that it, there's there's a, like a place specifically like around Wentworth on the way to Raw Marsh which like right you know is is like and will forever be like sort of pet sounds tinged yeah I mean Amazing. and vice versa yeah yeah pet, pet sounds will always be have a bit of will always sort of conjure up them images, I think, for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the other thing that was sort of getting played in that car, probably, and this tune specifically reminds me of is, like, Carpenters. Something like the end, the back half of this, like, there's, a, there's I don't to me, it's like, there's a... I don't, there's, I don't know, there's, like, a Carpenters shadow hanging over it. Yeah. Somehow. Um a good thing, as far as I'm concerned. Um, we've only just begun, and songs like that are just amazing. No. I think we dab, you know, the, the the things that those two things we just mentioned that have in common that I think is what me why me dad would play them for me, but also for himself. I think it's just because it's, it's the is the 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 vocal harmony, and uh, it can be really powerful. That thing, I think, and. It sort of yeah, yeah as the like music in general, but spe but I think specifically like vocal harmony, especially like the the uh, the sort of that like sibling vocal harmony as well, which uh, is is I don't know, it's just some there's some magic in there, isn't there that you you evoke something from you that you don't have a choice in really. Yeah, when you, as a listener. Yeah, totally. Uh, four out of five is the next song. When it's doing it right. <laughs> Four out of five is the next song on Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. It's also the new single. You've just put out a, a beautiful video uh, to go with the song. Um, which uh, did you get to channel your film director ambitions? Or well, I think oh. the the actual directors recognised that I was sort of barking up the tree of channeling my film director. Uh, whatever you just said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and sort of allowed like then then had a bit of fun with that idea that well maybe he's directing the thing in the thing I don't know I mean I could talk about that all day John um, but there's a lot I mean there's so much to talk about because the songs are so so densely layered I think you know both from the lyric through to the music and then you know when you put visuals to that suddenly you've introduced in a whole other kind of ball game but I mean at least you get to kind of reference some of the things you've been talking about tonight such as Kubrick and and the one point perspective or or, or things like that you know you mm. get to put that into your into your video as well but I I've, having watched it I loved the idea that that was actually your house um where is it Blenheim Palace where where is it um the, the location for yeah, the video? yeah yeah I can I confirm just, it in like no, but, yeah I'd, or, you know, so, uh, where's that yeah place in the miles is more like the orange tunnel right <laughs> yeah. in reality no. but I just love this idea that you lived in this amazing uh spot and <laughs> yeah no I, I clearly did realize that maybe i know you've been successful but um you haven't yet i'm just there yeah, like your sort of bolex in a horse in yeah. your back garden yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah it's so it's it's a great 
video. I saw, yeah, I think, I mean, originally we wrote a treatment for Star Treatment, the song, mm. and there was this idea that came from that, that of this scene in that, in the, during the second verse, where in the second verse of Star Treatment, where I'm, there's that that obviously the thing about star treatment i suppose the lyrics is like the oh, there, there's only one thing that's that's happening there's there's like it's it's sort of you you i almost see it as like you're right there with the uh narration almost like i think you've so there was this idea of making a video for that where we'd like depict exactly what's happening in the lyrics and eventually we end up in this car in the second verse and it's like i'm in the front of the car perhaps but who's the ghost in the back? And then it, and then we sort of began to explore this idea that that was me as well, and that I was talking to myself, which I think I am on that song, but perhaps a lot of the time. <laughs> the um, so that's where the, that came from, like the sort of uh, the 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 how we ended up there in the video, like. But how that relates to four out of five, the songs. Well, that's how it relates to it, I suppose. Is like yeah, through this other thing on the on the on the record. I mean, somebody plays on four out of five that um, that is a, a new addition to the uh, array of people that you get involved in. Uh, James, right on from uh, Claxons, and um, also his solo shot machine. Mm. Um, so I mean, he he plays on this track, I think. Um, he played on this track, yeah. He plays on a couple of songs on the on the record. So but during our um, time at La Fret, we had a number of visitors actually. Uh, James was one of them. Josephine is his keyboard player who, who plays with him in Shock Machine. Uh, Lauren Humphrey, who I mentioned before, he helped me with some recordings and he. Uh, he played on the. He played with the puppets. Um, a couple of the our friends from Mini Mansions were on the road with Sparks during the time that we were um, like playing in Sparks band. Yeah, they were Tyler and Zach and Evan, and they right when we arrived at Lafre a couple of days later were due to be in Paris with a day off or two days off or something so that like worked out to where we got them and then yeah did a bunch of recording there with like nine people in a room together and that's something we hadn't got to do before and have always wanted to and would like to do more of I think yeah uh, in perhaps a with a record that's more suited to it than this one was even but there's definitely certainly when I was talking before about I when I look at this album and like the energy of it comes from that time at the fret i think that has a lot to do with the fact that there were these visitors coming in and out yeah which was a nice thing and a good thing and absolutely yeah you yeah, had a lot of fun and four out of five i mean um i love the idea of of uh people grading things you know um and the grading the to carry a on a Right, a, a lunar complex leisure facility. You know, um, it's, <laughs> it's it's just great the way that your your mind works. I think coming out with this stuff. Do I mean? I suppose of of a thing. I'm when I think about it, I'm not sure. That, you know, there's this, there's something in Tranquility Base Base that suggests that, and maybe through this song as well. You know, you may not have to leave the comfort of your own home to get to this place either. Like that's the, some of this. Um, I think is in my mind when I'm thinking of it. I mean, well, you certainly don't because you just put the, you put your headphones on, don't you? Yeah. And, and, and there you go. But in a way, you're taking us up there in the song. Hopefully, the, John, yeah. Well, I think you are. I think you are. We're going to go there now um, and uh, definitely give it four out of five. This is Arctic Monkeys on Radio X. You're listening to Exposure on Radio X. I'm John Kennedy, and with me tonight is Alex Turner from Arctic Monkeys. You just heard the world's first ever monster truck front flip from the new album Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. Alex is very kindly talking us through the whole thing track by track. Um, what can you tell us about um, th that song 
with the amazingly long title. Right. That was a real news story that I read, a real headline that I read with a, with a video attached to it that I um, watched. And, well, it's just remarkable, really, mm. you know, that... So that it's, can be. So you, that's possible. So you saw this thing, and thought, "I'm using that, or I'm having some of that." Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think I imagined like a sort of all the president's men style uh, newsroom, like is that like Justin Hoffman and uh, Robert Redford, and like stop, like sort of trying to get the editor's attention. Like, you're not going to believe it. Somebody's done it forwards. <laughs> And it just, I think that was like going off in my mind perhaps and I thought, I don't know, it just seemed like that's, that's, uh, it, that's, that's where we're at now, isn't it? It's like that, that, those, they're the types of things that are happening. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and, and I don't, yeah, it just seemed to, it seemed like it was going begging. <laughs> and um, it's, but again, it's like enough, it don't, you know, it's, it's, it don't, that, I think also this, is with this one, it has a lot to do with, Again, but it all does to a degree. But I think certain on, c on certain occasions, it's um, even even more the case. And I think this is one of them where the music and that particular part, where I don't know what you'd call it necessarily in this tune, but uh, the the moment where it sing where we sing that world's first ever monster truck front flip, just. It was the it was what was going on in the music that seemed to like allow that mm. to be the yeah words we were uttering. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's really interesting the way that, you know you were talking earlier on about how you know you composed or recorded a particular uh, song and how at that point you weren't you hadn't mastered the tune, so you were you know recording it in little sections mm. and and there's something that really, i think um that the, the the album kind of sounds like records that dre would have sampled or something mm. but this is the record <laughs> so you've kind of created a record that sounds like it could have been a record that was sampled by somebody i can live know. with that John. yeah no I mean, I mean i think i'm with uh the world's ever first ever monster truck front flip there, there's like that insistent keyboard ah, that i see have. what you're getting at and, there. yeah yeah and it's kind of you know that it, it just uh you know i wouldn't be surprised if people are going to end up using this as a source material for future creative endeavors we'll see um and it, yeah, yeah obviously never that'd, know that'd be a good thing um science fiction is the next song um and what can you tell us about this? I mean, the, the way uh, I want to stay with you, my love, the way some science fiction does. You know, I, if if I'm interpreting this correctly, I mean, I find science fiction does linger. That you walk around and these scenes, these images, these ideas, kind of linger in your your head for a long time. Be it Silent Running or you know much more recent science fiction films, the the one that David Bowie's son made was that just called Moon? Uh, yeah. But you know. It, it, you well, kind I of think, end up living in that world. Well, I, I would imagine that that's the primary objective, isn't it? I think mm. it's just to it's to do that. Um, this it's really from this song and from that idea. In fact, that all the other you know that that access to like all the vocabulary that leads us to. Um, the record being called named after a hotel and casino at the site of the first moon landing and everything around that and the the fact there's a rocket launch on ultra cheese and i don't know it all kind of i think first it started with this idea or like the idea that science fiction is a i think specifically probably in um in films, because I, I, I truthfully I'm, I haven't read that much science fiction. Mm. Like, uh, but the, that idea that, that often that these worlds, are, these other worlds are created, or yeah, do, yeah, in order to explore ideas that are in, related to this one. Yeah, yeah. 
so often you know that, that something set in the future or something set in an alien landscape or something set in in a world that you know we, we can barely imagine is actually all about the world that we're living in right now yeah 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 exactly and um and you, you kind of confront the 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 songwriter's dilemma or you know many dilemmas about how do you write songs that communicate and um express ideas and thoughts in a way that hasn't been done before and uh, it's sort of it's a bit it gets it gets a little bit stuck i suppose the whole thing it's like going around it's a little bit like the you know we've got like this there's a model on the front cover obviously which i've referred to for most of the time as the lobby model and it's this idea that i think that um it's the, the you know the the model of the place that it's in, and it's almost like that's the this song on this record. If I'm not getting I'm getting a little bit I'm getting into some choppy waters here, John, but <laughs> bear with me. Like th this this is what science fiction the song sort of feels like that now. Like if the if let's suppose for a second this was this place, then science fiction is like the model in its lobby of the larger place, and you just sort of like a infinity loop with it yeah but so the, this is like the song as a model so uh we're looking at the song if we looked at it as a model we'd be looking at the song you know like the f the the, the <laughs> well you know <laughs> no no I, I love this idea i think it's great it didn't start out like that i don't know i'm just like uh i'm just um i'm just uh I don't know, I'm sort of trying to bring it into focus a bit, maybe, for, as much for myself as anything, possibly. But the, I don't know, I think the the the, the model on the, 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 the artwork def certainly started from a picture that I saw in, uh, in, of, of someone in the art department on 2001 Space Odyssey sitting in the Hilton, there's that scene in, in the Hilton with the mm. kit and there's a, there's a photograph I've got of like someone with like a hammer on the floor next to him like sort of sticking the Hilton letters on the screen and like like building the the set for the thing working on the thing and I suppose we, at this point we'd already called um, and decided to call the record Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino began to think of things that may be in the lobby of this place and sort of designed some of them like you know there was like a information sign that I made and like a key chest and some other things but the thing that I arrived at or became most uh, obsessed with I suppose with this idea that there was a model of the place inside the lobby and then um, so that was the thing where I was where I focused most of my attention and time on was was trying to sort of not yeah not figure out what the place would look like, but just figure out what the model of itself inside it would. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> now then, who, who made the model? Now then, John, <laughs> did you make the model? Who made it? I made the model. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. Wow, excellent. Is that balsa wood? What would uh, it's this uh, what they call out in the, <laughs> the illustration board? Right. And, uh, a bit of dowel that supports. Right, and then you sat it on top of a, like a Revox. And I sat it on top of a tape machine, so I would, I would drive him back f from the, like, art supply shop one day, and I saw a rotating sign, of which there are many in Los Angeles, but this one was outside this place called House of Pies, which I've never actually been inside. I... I I ought to. Yeah, I think we can <laughs> we can all agree that based on the information that I've just stated. But it it's uh, it had a, a sign that we rotating. I thought this place should have a rotating sign like House of Pies. I thought how could I do that? I could sit it on top of a record player, or I could sit it on top of the Revox A seventy seven that I used to do a lot of like the vocal effects on me recording, like the slapback effect on um, my initial recordings and that actually as it is in that image there has I'd, some, I'd, I'd occasionally do rough mixes from the 8 track to that as like a just some references to like go and listen to you know whatever 
and I'd, I'd bounce the eight, I'd, I'd do a mix of the eight tracks on the machine to that machine. So what is actually sitting underneath the model in that image, the tape on that thing has the record on it. Right. Like a, like an earlier well, version of it, yeah. which is, I don't know, seemed important somehow. Or seemed to make it all make sense to yeah. me. Yeah. Wow. You could win the, the, uh, the, the um, Turner Prize with this kind of stuff, I think. You know. Oh, know. obviously, and that's meant, not meant to be a pun on your name. So. That was, I, that's, I couldn't <laughs> get around that yeah, then, yeah, the fact yeah. that it might be, though, yeah. for a minute, to even <laughs> react to what that might mean. The, the Turner Prize. Yeah, I don't... The I, Turner but Prize. either way, pun or no pun, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Let's just play the song. <laughs> Excellent. This is it. This is science fiction. It is Arctic Monkeys on Exposure, Radio X. She Looks Like Fun. It is Arctic Monkeys on Exposure Radio X. It's the ninth song on the brand new album, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino, which I'm playing in full tonight with Alex Turner, talking us through it track by track. And in some ways, She Looks Like Fun is is the, the nearest you bring yourselves back to the world of rock, uh, possibly. Um, it's it's the, the, the heaviest uh, sounding I suppose, Song. yeah, rock without the roll, if you if that's the one, isn't it? Actually, it's, it all seems like rock and roll to me, John. It does, to me yeah. too. It's all pop music, that's what I generally yeah. say. Pet to sounds people. is rock and roll, isn't yeah. it? Well, yeah. like, like you hear Brian Wilson talk about pet sounds, not that I'm for a second Radio X listeners thinking that that's in the same, well, this is in the same league as that, of course, but, um, but yeah, it's rock and roll, man. Yeah. She looks like fun. What's, is, I mean, you know, there, it's so funny because when I, when it first starts up, you no, know, that it, it could, it ties back to your relationship with Josh Homme, I think, because you can hear a maybe tiny, tiny smidgen of of that kind of world that Josh lives in. But there's also a kind of uh, a lad insane, man who sold the world, kind of David Bowie aspect to it, um, and then it's very much you and the the sound of Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino, isn't it? Nice one, John. Yeah, the uh, you might say it's frenzied. Uh, yes, but controlled. Do you yeah. not think so? It seems controlled. I like isn't to it? think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I can't remember like what the the actual uh, origin of it was. Um, I think there's this television program called High Maintenance about a weed dealer. In New York, so like he's, he he uh, like cycles round his bike, delivering weed, and each episode is a, is the is a built around the person who is receiving that delivery. Right. That week. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen that. Sounds interesting. Yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's funny. It amuses me, John. <laughs> but there's there's this one that I saw, and the main character was a writer. She was. Supposed to be doing an interview with him, with the, the, uh, with 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 the. I forget his name. Ben, I think it is Sinclair. Ben Sinclair, I think's the name of the, the the creator of it. Could be wrong. That's also, I think, someone from my childhood. But it might be both. <laughs> um, <laughs> often is, isn't it? <laughs> maybe it's often both. Now, maybe you know. <laughs> it's often both. Um, but this cat, the, the protagonist in this this week's episode is like constantly on the sort of swiping through the 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 phone yes the miniature monolith in the pocket and and sort of taking a picture of the launch and like doing the whole everything to sort of keep up the appearances in this like parallel universe um but the, eventually at the end of the episode uh, oh, the, the, yeah, the, yeah, the end of it. The, it's like there's the it's got the monolith in one hand and the uh, and a and a, 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 a novel or a, a book in the other, and keeps like c- constantly distracted by the this parallel universe and the pressure to keep up appearances within it, and can't uh, keep her eyes on the book and keeps like switching back to them let's keep calling it the monolith shall we yeah yeah do um, and then eventually just burst into tears and I think um, I think that might have been the origin of like this 
uh, this song and like the idea of of yeah that constant like um i don't know yeah up, updating and refreshing this idea that you project to yourself in this parallel universe yeah hence being in a bar talking to people about something you don't now this is a slight digression um you pick up on the one line that sort of doesn't adhere to anything that i've perhaps just said or maybe it does a little bit but i I often think like that's the bridge in the song and like when there's like this musical digression often it like encourages me or, or uh sometimes it sort of demands that i like move off in a different direction lyrically I think it's some of the in quite a lot of my songs that seems to be the case um, and this one I took the opportunity to sort of have that word with myself about something that like I just actually in reality wanted to stop just repeating this this thing Yeah, I think the other thing I'd say about this is it, the whole the monotony that I was suggested to me perhaps from that television program that I just described um, was that it's, it's, kind of, it's just seemed quite frenzied to me that I think and like that sound and I sort of made it there's this it goes it goes like three verses in this tune before anything else changes and I think like by that third one you get this sense of like you shouldn't be like doing it again like it's time to like move somewhere else and eventually that's what does happen like with the just after that but um all that said it did seem important to me that it was the place where i was sort of submitting these um ideas or where i I was a place where bruce wayne is real and i'm spending my new year's eve there right wayne manor like that Excellent. That seems instru- uh, you know, yeah, integral. Well, yeah. But that kind of links to Batphone then. <sighs> Doesn't it? I mean, See, you, you, you've, you've made that link. You're rubbing off on me yeah, now, John. I know. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm doing it now. Yeah, fantastic. And of course, you know, Bruce is the, well, no, he's the man, the other end of the Batphone. Right. Yeah, I was going to say he's the owner of the Batphone, but he isn't. He's the man who you pick up the Batphone to speak to. Um, so Batphone is the next song. Um, and... Um, what's this one? What's going about? on here? What's yeah. going off there? I've written a note of life becoming a spectator sport. Right, which I think does relate to what we were just uh, sort of skirting around on. Um, she looks like fun. And this, I mean, this has got the. Uh, <laughs> I remember once, like being in the vicinity of somebody who was like swiping through the form, and they did like the, and they, and like maybe in, like an airport or something. And they were swiping through, and they just like ended up. They, they, no one else around them. They were like just sort of looked up from it and went, <laughs> blew it, like blew an actual razor, actual raspberry. Amazing. I don't know. I feel like that. I may have took a cue from that. Like, it takes a lot to make you want to like blow a raspberry, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in public when there's nobody else around. That yeah. Knows you. Anyway, um, but what's that going to do with this? Not a lot. Uh, Batphone. What's what else? Must say. What was we talking about on that? Uh, well, Batphone has the great line about um, integrity, about the fragrance, and and the idea that um, you know you're you're you're, you're not sell- you're selling something. Um, you're selling integrity, you know, the, the, but your integrity can't be bought. You know that that. I mean, you express it much better than that. But um, you know, which is which is great, and it's a it, it's an interesting observation. Thanks, John. I think that comes from. Uh, I can't remember that being the intention. It's like I'm thinking I'm. I, I'm this is what I'm going to do in this verse. Is kind of sort of elude to this idea about I don't know it, it really doesn't, doesn't seem like it very often comes out like that it's more like I can visualise the font that would be on the perfume bottle that says integrity and then once I've seen that I can see that 
but they, you know, it, it sort of didn't seem like an idea that's very uh, that was would be far away would, would be that. Mm. And then, I, I, yeah, and then they just they suppose the rest of it just like falls into place after you can like visualize that. That's how that's how something like that would work for. For me, not that that's necessarily what you just asked me. Just no, then, but no, but like, that's but that that's that's uh, an interesting illustration of how your mind jumps from one thing to another. You know that you might have visualised a, a font on a fragrance called Integrity, and suddenly you're thinking you're thinking around that and turning that into a lyric and adding it to some music. No, I don't know. That's that's it. I mean, and that's partly what these conversations are about—to get a little window into your world, Alex. You know, it's mm. a great, great thing. And obviously, she looks like fun, and Batphone do seem very related, don't they? You know that that kind of you know the, the handheld device. They the, do now. You the, come to mention it, actually. The monolith yeah. that you were referring to mm. earlier. Um, and but we're going to play it now. So this is Batphone. This is Arctic Monkeys with Batphone on Exposure Radio X. It is Arctic Monkeys with Batphone on Exposure at Radio X. It is the 10th track on the new album, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. It's the penultimate track. We've got one more song to play you. Alex Turner is here. The Ultra Cheese is the last song on the album. And um, this seems to tie back into your lounge singer Shimmer um, that you mentioned at the beginning of the album. Um, yeah, what's happening in an ultra? Let me think. Sorry, I'm. Um, so it seems like a straight ballad with you on the piano. That's it, the way that it's kind of musically constructed. But yeah. And if you look at the words, there's other stuff going on. Sort of story of my life. I, <laughs> I, I can't help myself. I've no, got. But, no, but it's you know this type. This is. Uh, I do feel as if. This has become the type of tune that I'm, uh, is um, you know closest. It, it's perhaps like what I might call me default position, I suppose. In it, like you know, like cornerstone or dream synopsis or um, those ones. It, it's, it's, it's sort of uh, it just seems to that's it's uh, the the most accessible. Or, or like when I'm most comfortable or something, perhaps. Um, so I mean, that's not what, that's not how we want to leave it though at all, John, is it? That's <laughs> we come all this way to just say this is my default position because that's not it. But because there's a lot of people featured on this one as well. Aren't yeah, this might be the most. This is yeah. like the whole team. Well, this is the one that I think does. Uh, I, I sort of mentioned in passing, I think, before the idea that we on it, that we wanted to try this approach that had been the approach to some of our favourite records, those records being like Pet Sounds and Dion Born To Be With You, and among others. But even like a lot of the like Serge Gainsbourg stuff, I think that we're chasing down on this album is like, uh, was recorded like um, a, a lot of people in a room doing a live take sort of thing. Um, but what we've ended up with on our album is that, you know, it's like an hybrid of that and also these, like, dusty demos from the from the Tascam that we were sort of applied that to and, like, sort of, like, crowbarred it in a little bit and where well, it didn't necessarily fit. But I think the... But, it's, but I think it still worked. You know, I think it, it brought something to it anyway, doing that, like, brought this energy to it, having all the extra, sort of, the expanded group... But the uh, song where I think it was exactly the right approach to do it that way is Ultra Cheese, and we did it. Uh, I think it were Hel Elders and Lauren, both on drums, two kits. Uh, Jamie and Tom and Evan all playing guitars. G I don't know, a couple of people playing pianos and like me singing outside at the same time, and that that was the. I think this is a song where we got the best of that approach, like, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in terms of, I mean, because that, that sounds like a, you know, a, a great live band. You've got all these people, like two kits, you know, all, all going at the same time, mm. which is really exciting and must be, you know, a great feeling to be a part of. And, you know, is that something that you're hoping will be happening on stage now when you've got all these live dates? 
No, so, so you've already we've, played a few shows, haven't you? We, yeah, we have. Yeah, we've extended, we've uh, expanded rather beyond the five of us that we had on AM, but not as far as we did for the for the recordings because I don't think that's completely necessary just now. Like, but um, but one day, like, yeah, I think yeah. It'd, be, it'd be great to do something like that. But um, but that's maybe that's something in the future. Yeah. And it's an intimate album, isn't it? It's 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 a very um, one-to-one listening experience. I think, you know, having you know listened to it tonight, and and you know, it, in in listening to it many times before seeing you today. You know, I just think it's and yeah, it's it's it'll be interesting to see how you then take that to to a, an audience. You know, because mm. um, you won't be playing in in these quiet rooms that you re- referred to on the record. I won't be the well, hopefully not. I don't no. know. Yeah. Well, no, not judging by the ticket sales. Which, I'll at least you know, have the band. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but so. no, the ticket sales have revealed that there will be many other people there with no, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And are you aiming to be doing lots of this material or the, on tranquility base? Yeah, we've done. We've been doing some. We've been doing some off for every record. Like these mm. first ones we've done, yeah, and uh, I, I should imagine we continue to do that, yeah, for the rest of yeah, yeah, excellent. I think so, Alex. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you, John. Great Appreciate to have you. Great to see you again, and enjoy the um, the pleasures that being the the owner and creator of a lunar leisure complex can bring you. you no, know, I think <laughs> I think it's going to be, you know, you're you're what the first person to kind of stake claim with a, a kind of leisure complex on the moon so far you know you, you've created the idea so that's kind of almost a reality well, now. that we know of uh, yeah going to be exciting putting a flag there <laughs> before anybody else <laughs> and we're going to hear the altered cheese now it is arctic monkeys on exposure radio x thank you john <laughs> 